Today in the news, we got Mama Sue giving us a freebie, a bingo card that I made, and Intel is on the naughty list. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with AMD. In less than 24 hours, the company is planning to finally unveil everything. But as is the case with pretty much every event, stuff ends up leaking hours before it's supposed to. This time though, it's Lisa Sue herself that shows us the goods. So we've heard that uh, Rembrandt would be pretty exciting. There was a leak of a notebook PCB late last week where we saw what is allegedly a Ryzen 9 6900HX coupled with a 6700M GPU. This leak gave us some insight as to how big the CPU was. Well, with this photo tweeted by Mamasu herself, we can see that it's huge. And thanks to videocards.com who did the comparison, we can see that it's the biggest Ryzen notebook processor yet at around 208 millimeters square. Now that is impressive. By the way, let's do a quick uh, bingo card for tomorrow's events. From AMD, we got the RX 6850 XT GPU. Uh, let's make a case for six nanometer CPUs and six nanometer GPUs. Uh, five gigahertz CPU, why not? Some Zen 4 details, a full unveil of Zen 3D vCache, it's almost a freebie, uh, desktop APU, although I really don't think that this will happen, and the RX 6500 XT and 6400 announcement. From NVIDIA, we got the 3090 Ti, 30 the 70 Ti, 16 gig, the 3080, 12 gig. Uh, let's add the 3060 Super, any Super actually, and let's say any new feature update like DLSS or broadcast. Then we got Intel. Uh, we got any date announcement really for their GPU side, uh, performance information on Alchemist. Oh, photos of the actual uh, GPU or footage of it. And um, on the CPU side, I guess we got the 12900KS. Damn, now I got five boxes left. Oh, any RDNA 3 info, uh, any one more thing announcement, let's say RSR from AMD or an FSR update. And let's top it off with any talk of an anti-mining measure. All right, so do what you will with uh, this whole uh, bingo card. Then we got Intel in the news. The company seems dead set on removing a functionality they used to advertise pretty hard. And that is the AVX512 instruction set for their Alder Lake CPUs. Now, as is, Intel never really mentioned AVX512 support for the 12th generation of CPUs, but the silicon itself does support it. There's a great video out there from Der Bauer explaining how to actually use AVX512 on an Alder Lake CPU. All you really have to do is disable the e-cores and boom, AVX512 was turned on. Well, starting now, Intel will advise motherboard manufacturers to disable the feature either in the BIOS or through a microcode update. We're just not sure which one yet. AVX512 is used in some programs like the Blender Cycles renderer, or it can accelerate things like scientific simulations, financial analytics, AI, and others. So it's not trivial, but if you game, it's basically never used by the developers, so it's fine. It's just a shame that those that could have taken advantage of that uh, AVX512 instruction set won't be able to. Also, with Intel, let's talk XE, or ARC, or Alchemist, I guess. One of their discrete GPUs has been spotted on the SysSoft Sandra Online database. Specifically, it was the A380, what is supposed to be the mid to low range performer on Intel's stack. Now, as we've heard through the rumors, Intel isn't gunning for the top spot in this first generation of GPUs, which means that this will not be a mid-range performance card like a 6600 XT or a 3060 from Nvidia. Anyways, back to the leak, the A380 was found by Momomo US over on Twitter. And according to what we can see here, it has 128 execution units for 1024 stream processors. It would be clocked at 2.45 gigahertz, so pretty high clocks there, and have 
4.8 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, that's probably just a, a glitch. Unless Intel is taking some cues from, uh, you know, Nvidia's GTX 970 you know what I mean. But anyways, moving on with its score within the database, it places itself right under a 3050 Ti laptop GPU and an RX 580 and right above a 1650 Super. Now, if that's any representation of gaming performance, it's not bad, especially considering that this is the 128 EU version of the card. Remember, Intel's Alchemist lineup is likely planned to have a 256, 384, and 512 EU version of that SOC. But as with any leaks, take it with a grain of salt. And lastly, let's do our free game check, shall we? And if you like adventure games, you're gonna love this. Until this Thursday, the Epic Game Store is pushing three versions of Tomb Raider for free. You have Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Definitive Edition, and Tomb Raider Game of the Year Edition. That's a pretty good trio. It's worth about 30 bucks Canadian. And if you're a Prime Gaming member or just an Amazon Prime customer, you can get World War Z Aftermath, Total War Warhammer, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. All of these for the sweet price of zero. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the, right here, here. To subscribe to the channel, right? Um, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.